everybody, here we are working on Unit 2 still. We are now going to be dealing with um, Chapter 15, and in this chapter we're going to be dealing with ions. Ions are interesting because this is what happens when we have um, the same number of protons, but now the number of electrons is changing. It's always important to keep in mind that Protons are what define an atom, okay? And protons have a positive charge. Now, as Paula Abdul made super famous in 1989, opposites attract, and that's where electrons come in. Electrons and protons are attracted to each other, and so as long as you have the same number of positives and the same number of negatives, this is what we call a neutral atom. We don't have a charge. It's not an ion until we have different numbers of protons as we have electrons. So, to give you an idea, sodium element Na has 11 protons. So, if, and it blows up in water pretty spectacularly. But if we have 11 protons, that also means that if it's neutral, it's going to have 11 electrons. And so this is neutral. It doesn't become an ion until we change this number. Okay. Now, we can tie this all together because, remember, sodium is on the left-hand side of the periodic table. That's a metal. And another one of those properties of the metal is that metals typically lose electrons and so when we lose electrons, that makes them positive. We're going to talk a little bit more about this um, in detail. And then the opposite is true for nonmetals. Nonmetals typically gain electrons, the things on the right-hand side of the periodic table above the stair step, and that makes them negative. So how do these ions form? So let's say we have an element, and we're going to deal with small numbers to make it easier. Okay, so let's deal with the element boron. Okay, the element boron has five protons. Now, if it had five electrons, that means that the overall charge is zero and it makes it neutral. This it has the same number of protons as it has electrons. I pick boron because boron is a metalloid, so it can kind of be both a metal and a nonmetal, um, depending. So let's say boron, instead of having five electrons, ends up having four electrons. What happens to it? Well, if we compare, which one is more? Do we, is there more protons or is there more electrons? Well, there's more protons. So because there's more protons, that means the charge is the difference, which is 1, but then which one is more? It's a 1 plus charge. It's a positively charged ion. Okay. So it has lost electrons. It has gone from 5 electrons down to 4, but because it has lost electrons, it is a 1 plus charge because we're comparing the positive and the negative charges. We could do the same thing. Let's say it gained, instead of um, having five electrons here to start with, let's say it gained two electrons. Okay, So now we compare five to seven. Which one is more? Is there more protons or more electrons? Well, there's more electrons by two. And because there's more electrons, it's a negative charge, and so this becomes a negatively charged ion, and it has a charge of 2 minus. So it turns out that changing the number of electrons makes the atom turn into an ion, and atoms can be positively or negatively charged based on whether you're losing or gaining electrons. Okay, and so just as an aside, I'll tell you this, okay, if we can, if atoms can lose electrons, so can molecules, okay? Certain molecules can lose electrons and then become charged. If they do, we call them ions still because we've lost electrons or gained electrons, 
But instead of calling them just plain old ions, we have a name for it that we call a polyatomic ion. Okay, Poly means many atomic atoms, so we have many atoms in the ion. Okay, so you'll see something like NO3 with a 1 minus charge. So this is nitrogen, oxygen, there's three oxygens. So because there's three oxygens, this makes this a molecule, but it's got a charge here. Okay, so because it has a charge, that makes it an ion, a polyatomic ion. We're not going to spend much time talking about these things, but um, they're important to know that they exist. Now the other thing that I want to say is that you can go out into nature and find atoms and elements and molecules and compounds and things like this, but no matter what we do, ions can't be found alone. Okay, Like I said in this video previous, opposites attract. So if we have a positively charged thing, that's not going to exist all by itself in chemistry. If we have a positive ion, the positive ion has to be coupled with a negative ion to make these two things neutral. Okay, And so you cannot find just a pile of positive ions someplace. You cannot find a pile of negative ions someplace. Ions have to be coupled with an ion that has the opposite charge of it. So that's what we have to say about ions, chapter 15. I hope this helps, and have a great day.